So we've been talking about all these statues across the country that are being taken down, and uh, it happened right here in our backyard on the UNLV campus, the Hey Reb statue taken down. And now people are talking about the mascot. Maybe we can have a shark mascot. What better person to talk about this than the son of the late, great Jerry Tarkanian, also former running rebel himself, Danny Tarkanian. Danny, thanks for joining us. How are you? Great. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, Danny, let me first say this. Congratulations on your win. Uh, for those of you that aren't aware, uh, Danny just won a seat uh, the Douglas County Commission. Even though it was a tight one, uh, I had to feel good to win. I, I, you know, I see you at pictures of you embracing your wife. It was an emotional moment for you. So I wanted to congratulate you on that. It must feel really good. Yes, it does. It's been a long time coming. I've tried in a number of other races that were very disappointing, very happy uh, and fortunate to have won this one. Yeah, I know there's a lot of people in Vegas here that you know, that are including myself, that are very happy for you on that. Uh, I want to talk about this. Obviously, the reason why I wanted to have you on was to talk about uh, not just the Hey Reb statue, but uh, the possibility of a shark mascot. But before we get to the shark mascot, can I get your opinion on the statue uh, being taken down? Do you have any opinions on that? Well, look, I, I think um, the country's overblowing what's gone on, and they're doing things that are ridiculous. I mean, when you take down Ulysses Grant's statue, the general that helped end slavery because of racism, uh, you've gone over the edge. And when you uh, take down George Washington's statue and you piss on it, you've gone over the edge. Uh, hey, Reb, uh, is not a racist statue. It's supposed to be of a frontiersman. I understand as Native Americans that feel the symbol of a frontiersman is racist. I mean, in that case, almost everything is racist. You know, growing uh, through history, everybody, every segment of, of society has had some bad people in, that have done bad things. Uh, as a collective group, uh, you can't start eliminating them just because of, of that. But if, if it's, I don't think it's a big deal for UNLV. They had a, a um, mascot in the late 70s. They got rid of that was actually a, a racist um, mascot. My dad was a coach at the time, and a lot of the talk was to change the nickname at that time. In fact, they were throwing out different names they were going to use and so forth, but nothing ever came of it. Uh, I don't think the mascot's a big deal. I think changing the nickname would be a, a, a huge mistake for the university. Yeah. And when it comes to UNLV, everything you just said, I could not agree with you more. But yet we have people on the UNLV campus that we've interviewed that actually think that the running rebels should change their name. I think that is absurd. You know, Danny, what, when we look at it, what is the definition of a rebel? The definition of a rebel is somebody that does something different than the norm. That has nothing to do with being racist. It has nothing to do with, a, with, with, with being hateful towards any. Anybody. It's in fact, I would say a rebel, for the most part in society, is a positive thing, not a negative thing. I mean, I would imagine you agree with that. I agree 100. percent And to me, a rebel is somebody who takes on the establishment and tries to make make changes. And that's exactly what my father did. He took on the NC2 and the establishment, and uh, his band of rebels, as I called him, won the national championship. And if you look at the changes that have been made to the uh, NC2, he's a uh, recruitment and enforcement policies. Uh, my dad was very successful in that, it, and it took a rebel to do so. Uh, branding is very, very expensive and very hard to do. Uh, the running rebel name is worth hundreds of millions of dollars, well, tens of millions, maybe hundreds of millions of dollars to the university. It's taken a long time to build it up, uh, to throw that away because uh, some people are short-sighted and, and just wanting to uh, connotate the rebel name to the Confederacy. I, I sure. think it's a huge mistake. But let me tell you, the university has made a lot of huge mistakes. It started off by trying to um, disavow everything my father and uh, his team had did when they first forced them out at UNLV. They brought back some of those things, but they still haven't done a lot, uh, much else. Uh, you know, there was a time when they, they wouldn't even interview um, any of the UNLV players that would play for my father or uh, former assistant coaches that were trying to get a job there. So, you know, they, they do things because of what's politically correct. My guess is they will change the nickname because it's politically correct. Oh, that's horrible. That's horrible. Danny, I, I think there are two reasons why the statue went down. And, I, by the way, I hope you're wrong. I, I hope they don't change the name. I know we agree on this. I think there's two reasons. Number one, the Black Lives Matter movement, uh, you know, they're equating it to the statue, the Hey Reb statue, what I think is absurd. I don't think they would have taken it down, and we wouldn't be talking about the name right now if not for the Black Lives Matter movement. And I think the second thing is this, and I think you'll agree with me on this. You know, a lot of these kids, and that's what they are, they're kids, 18, 19, 20 years old, that want the name changed. They want the Hey Reb statue taken down. A lot of these people have no idea even who your father is and what he did for that university. They have absolutely no idea 
everything your father did for Las Vegas and the legend that he was. I, I, I would imagine you'd probably agree with that. You know, I think we're making it a lot more narrow than it should when you just say what my father did. There were a lot of great people, individual players that put their heart and soul in building up a great tradition here at uh, UNLV. I mean, the, not just the Larry Johnson, Stacey Augmans, the Greg Anthony's that we know about, but there's a lot of them. Guys that I went to uh, played with that live in this community, a part of this community, but have built it up. Paul Brozovich, Eric Booker, Greg, um, um, uh, Jeff Collins, is those type of people, Larry Anderson's, those people built the, that name up for the university, and it means something uh, to people all around the country. People still come to UNLV because they remember those runner rebel teams. And yeah. to take that away from all of them, I think, is a grave injustice. Yeah, and you're right, by the way. I know, way, shape, or form, uh, besides your father, no way, shape, or form, diminishing those that came before him or after him that did some good things for the university. There's no question about that. And you know what a big fan I am of Lon Kruger and what he did at UNLV yeah. as well. No yeah. question about that. I want to I want to talk to you about uh, the shark mascot, though, because I think this is important. Listen, I, we agree on all this, Danny. I don't think that the mascot should have been taken down. I think if they change the name, it is a disgrace. But with that being said, if they change the mascot, and it appears like they, they might actually do that, would you endorse you know, the shark mascot? Because they're talking about having a, a shark mascot at UNLV. What are your thoughts on that, you and your family? Well, I mean, I certainly would like that. And my mother was quoting the paper saying she would. Well, we obviously would because it brings back some of um, what my father uh, did and ties to the university. Uh, but just because of that, I'm sure they will not use that as a mascot. You, you know, people... They look at the statue that was put up of my father and the court naming that was put up for my father. And they say, wow, the university really supports what Jerry Tarkin and his teams did. But that was all done under Tina Coons or the athletic director there who was there when my father was working at UNLV. And she went out on the limb to, to, to do some stuff before and after they have done. The university has done nothing but try to erase the memory of my father and his, his uh, records at UNLV. And I don't think that they're going to embrace it now i just i, I don't know oh, that's I sad <laughs> so you're so danny uh, that's sad i want to emphasize what you just said because that's really sad so you're telling me that you believe because your family and it would endorse the idea of a shark mascot you're saying in spite those that are there in power at unlv might not do it just for that reason that's horrible no no not, not because we would embrace it but because it would bring back a connection uh, of UNLV in the Jerry Tarkanian days. They've tried to eliminate that connection in many ways. I'm going to give you a quick story if you have a second. I came back to Las Vegas after my father uh, finished coaching, and there was an athletic director at UNLV. Um, he had called me, and he said, Danny, you know, why is it that I, we can't get the community to support the basketball program more? And I told them, I said, look, I just walked into the Thomas and Mac the other day, went to an event. There's not one picture of my father by himself in the uh, – Thomas and Max Center, uh, there are team pitchers, but none of them by himself. There are, are pitchers of uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and many others. Uh, but the guy that helped build that, that um, uh, stadium, you guys refused to, to even put a picture of him up there. Ugh. And he said, oh, yeah, that's horrible. We'll correct it. And he never did. It's because that's a there's a lot of people at the university that uh, did not agree with my, what my father did it and how he ran his program. And they are still there, and they still have power there, and they won't let it happen. Well, you know I'm, I'm 100% on your side. I think that is an utter disgrace. I think having a shark mascot would be fantastic. Uh, I think uh, your family deserves that. Your father deserves that. And, uh, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm completely 150%. On your side, I think that's absurd. Hey, I want to say again, Danny, congratulations on your win on the Douglas County uh, in the Douglas County Commission, uh, getting that seat. I think you deserve it. It's it's been hard hard work for you over the course of the years. Uh, I'm sure your wife is very happy, and I wanted to give you uh, my regards to your wife and your family. And uh, hopefully, we can have you on again sometime down the road, if and when UNLV does make that decision. But I wanted to say thank you for taking the time to join us. Really do appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. All right, there you go. That's Danny Tarkanian. And uh, look, I think it's really sad, and I wanted to talk about this for a minute. The fact that there are still people, it's so telling what Danny just said, the fact that there are still people on the UNLV campus that, re that might refuse to use the shark mascot because of the days of Jerry Tarkanian. And when you have coaches all over the country today, including Mike Krzyzewski, by the way, who cheat, who lie, who probably do 10 times worse than anything Jerry Tarkanian did here, but yet there are some people who are so complicit at UNLV that, are, that, that just don't want to be associated with the Tarkanian name. And I am, 
I, I disagree with Danny Tarkini when it comes to a lot of stuff politically, but I could not agree with him more when it comes to this UNLV stuff. It's a disgrace. Well, it's, it's because you know, how the picture has been painted about Jerry Tarkini and, and the things that he did. That, that's what it's all about. It's about how, how much national media exposure it got. It, that people in the university will look at it as kind of a black eye or an embarrassment to the university. But here's what I don't understand, Brian. What does changing the name of a of a mascot or removing a Hey Reb statue that you know, represents a frontiersman or a trailblazer, how does that help these people's lives that are the ones that are pushing for it to happen? When 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 that Hey Reb statue is down and that name is changed, how does how do their lives improve? Well, again, I, I don't speak and, and, for them, and, 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 but well, I'll, I'll, I'll try I'll, to answer. I'll try, how, let me try to answer. I, I just, and I'm not finished yet, but and and how are those? How is that statue affecting their life adversely, as well as that name affecting their life adversely? Huh? Enough, enough to, to to literally want because they don't see it every single day. They may they may Listen, see it maybe once once a week based on based on what I their schedule is going to class or whatever it is. But how how is that so so you know? I understand what you're asking. Yeah, like um, how, how is that influencing well, your all, life right. in, in such a negative capacity that you have right. to get it changed re- break, regardless. But- of the repercussions that come with removing a statue. All right, let, me, let, me, let me try to answer that. Uh, so we had uh, some of those students of uh, Indian descent, we that, did, yeah. that Native Americans, I should say, that uh, were on our show. And I do not speak for them, but I think I can answer that question because I think I know how they would answer it. Uh, they say that when they see that statue, in their belief, they believe it represents the atrocities that have happened to their people years ago. Just like, for example, if I saw a statue of Adolf Hitler. Now, I'm not comparing it, and I'm not saying I agree with their opinion, but the way they would answer it is the way I would answer it is if I saw an Adolf Hitler statue. I don't agree with what they're doing because, first of all, let me just start with the rebel. I said what the definition of a rebel is. A rebel is someone who does something that is not the norm. It has nothing to do with being a racist. It has nothing to do with breaking the law or doing anything horrible. In fact, I think it should be celebrated in being a rebel. Uh, Martin Luther King, right, he was a rebel. Uh, Abraham Lincoln, he was a rebel. You could say that because, you know, what he did is is against what many others believed in, and that was slavery, right? Uh, And it worked out pretty good. There's nothing wrong with being a rebel. And to change that name is a disgrace. I also disagree with taking down the statue. Now, is it a huge deal in the grand scheme of things? Probably not. Uh, I'm talking just about the statue. But but by by that logic, any time that those particular individuals that we had on the show look at an American map – and they see a state or a city that isn't named after a Native American Indian tribe. I mean, what do you? Uh, like, well, that's you, why. Well, that's why the, I the, say the, the same. The same logic would apply there. I mean, anyone can be offended by anything, Brian. Well, that's why I said I. I that, that's why. That's why this is such a slippery slope, and this broken glass theory could not be applied more than it is now in the United that's States. That's why. That's why I said I don't agree. I don't agree with what they're doing at UNLV.